Is cheap 3D filament actually bad or not? This is an age-old discussion in the 3D printer community. On one side you have the filament snobs who say no inferior filament should ever touch the nozzle of my printer. And then on the other side you have people like me who well, ask themselves if you really need the expensive stuff or if cheap filament will do just fine. So I searched around and bought the cheapest filament that I could find and compared it to some medium priced filament and well, let's see what the differences are. Now I wasn't able to test the strength or the tensile strength of these filaments, unfortunately. But I was able to test the adhesion of the filament, the layer quality, especially the quality of the outside walls and the surface of the prints, the string, so how much each of these filaments string when they print, and also how well they bridge and how well they handle overhangs. I printed three different test pieces with all of these filaments. One test piece was the all-in-one 3D printer test micro by Maida 107 and one was the warp test by TT Salo and then finally I also printed a regular Benchy. I printed all of these prints on the same printer and in this instance it was the P1P from Bamboo Lab and I used the same slicer settings for every single one of these filaments. I only changed the temperature to the recommended temperature on the packaging for each of these filaments. In this video I will be comparing five different filaments. I will start with the cheapest filament and I will end with the most expensive filament. So let's start with Eligu PLA. It usually costs around $20, but you can get a one kilogram spool for as low as $9.99 if you buy them in bulk. Eligu was kind enough to send me two of their spools for free for this video. So the spool itself is made out of recycled material, which is always nice. It also has some nice weight indicators. So you can basically see how much filament there is still left on the spool. I had absolutely no issues printing with this material. As you can see, the Benji turned out really good. There's only a slight surface detail right here, which doesn't look as good as the rest. But other than that, the surface was really clean, as you can see right here. There is a little bit of stringing, but just very, very minimal right here. Um, but other than that, it's just almost perfect. It's as good as it gets. The adhesion test was also perfect. There was no wobble whatsoever, so it stuck to the build plate really well. So the last piece tested multiple things, for example, stringing, overhang, and bridging. And as you can see, the overhang worked up to about 80, um, and then you can see the bottom side doesn't look as clean anymore. Bridging worked all the way to the longest bridge, although there is one little filament string right here, as you can see, and stringing, you can see the test piece right here, there's absolutely no string whatsoever. I had no issues printing with the Eligu PLA and as you can see the quality of the prints are also really really good. Next up I tested PLA by Creality which costs about 23 US dollars but you can get it for as low as 16 dollars if you buy them in bulk. The filament spool is made out of plastic and I especially like the design of this one because it has a lot of these holes for storing the filament in. So usually when you are done you will tuck the filament in these holes so that the spool doesn't undo itself. And I often have the issue that the next holes are so far away that they have to use the previous ones and then there's a lot of leftover filament that's just hanging around which is annoying. I also had no issues printing with this PLA. The first thing I printed was the Banshee and as you can see it turned out really good. There is absolutely no stringing but there are some surface imperfections. As you can see above the door of the Banshee there are some layer lines that are uneven. But other than that this Banshee is as good as it gets, it's almost perfect. Surface imperfections like these, as you can see on this Benchy, they usually come from tolerances. So tolerance is basically how much the filament can deviate from its diameter. The industry standard right now is plus minus 0.02 millimeters. 
This is unfortunately a slight issue with cheap filaments because the tolerances, even though they are the same as for higher quality PLA, and this instance is plus minus 0.02 millimeter as well, cheaper filament is unfortunately not tested as well as more expensive filament. So even though they have the same tolerance rating, cheap filament will often deviate more from that rating than the more expensive filament. When we look at the next model, you can see that there is definitely some stringing. You can also see that the bridging worked up to the longest bridge, which failed as well. You can also see that the overhangs worked up to about 70 degrees. And at 70 degrees, you can see that the bottom doesn't look as good anymore. And the final piece also shows there is absolutely no warping whatsoever. So surface adhesion wasn't an issue. So in the end, I had no issues printing with the Creality PLA, even though there were some slight surface imperfections in the final prints. Next up, we are going to take a look at Polymaker Polyterra PLA, which is more in the mid price section at about 20 to $21 per kilogram. This boot is also made from recycled material and can be recycled and there are also weight indicators on the spool so that you know how much filament is left on there. This was the first and only PLA on this list where I had some issues when printing. So the first print actually failed because the spool untangled uncontrollably and wrapped itself around the spool holder of the P1P effectively clogging the nozzle. But after fixing that issue, I had no problems printing with this PLA. The Banshee turned out great, even though I have to say that the PLA seems to shrink a little bit more than other PLAs I've used so far, as you can see at the layer line right here on the Banshee. This is where the inside of the Banshee meets with the outer wall, and usually these parts will contract more because there's more filament pulling on the outside walls, so you can always see like a slight line on the Banshee right here. And as you can see this is very pronounced on this filament so it seems to contract more than other filaments do. There's also some very slight stringing as you can see right here on the Banshee but other than that this Banshee turned out really good and also the surface quality is much better than on the Creality PLA. The second piece also turned out really well and interestingly enough you can see that there is much less stringing on this model than there is on the Banshee and I don't exactly know why. One thing that really surprised me was the bridging. As you can see it bridged effortlessly on the longest bridge right here. There is no filament hanging on the bottom so it worked great. The overhangs worked all the way up to 70 degrees. It started failing at 70 degrees and as you can see 80 degrees the bottom doesn't look as good anymore. And the final piece as you can see this is the adhesion test. It adhered perfectly to the build surface and it did not warp at all. Overall after the initial issue I had no more problems printing with the Polymaker Polyterra PLA and I especially like the surface finish and the color of this PLA. Next up, we are going to take a look at the Sun Lu PLA Plus. This is PLA Plus, which makes it a bit more rigid than other PLAs. But as I said before, I cannot test how rigid and how strong the PLA is. I can only test how well it prints. The first thing I printed, as always, was the Benchy. And as you can see, there is absolutely no stringing and the surface of the print looks just amazing. There are no surface imperfections and where we could previously see a line where the filament usually contracts, you can only make out a very, very small line right here. That's about it. On the torture test piece, we can see that it wasn't able to bridge the largest bridge. You can see that there is some filament hanging right there. And you can also see that there is some very, very slight stringing right here, but it's almost negligible. The overhangs on the other side um, failed at around 80 degrees again. So it's on par with the other filaments. The adhesion test piece was also no issue for the Sun Lu PLA. As you can see, it did not warp at all. Overall, I had absolutely no issues printing with this filament and I especially like the surface finish of this filament. And the final filament that we are going to take a look at today is GTEC PLA. 
It costs around $26 and it is the most expensive filament on this list. $24 to $26 is also about the average price of one kilogram of PLA filament. The spool is made out of plastic and interestingly enough it looks way cheaper than all of the other spools that I looked at today. When we look at the first model I printed, the Benchy, you can see that the surface looks very nice. There are no imperfections whatsoever, however, this filament tends to string quite a bit, as you can see right there and right here. And as you can see, this filament doesn't shrink as much as the other filaments on this list. Um, there is almost no line right here. You can barely see it. And if we take a look at the second model, then you can see how much this filament actually strings. There are literally strings everywhere. But these strings are very, very small, so they should be easily removable. Now if we take a look at the bridging part, then we can see that this filament managed to bridge the largest bridge without any issues. There's no filament hanging on the bottom there. So it apparently cleared that without any issues. If we look at the overhangs, then we can see that this filament failed at around 70 degrees, interestingly enough. But the bottom of the 80 degrees doesn't look all that bad. And the adhesion test also shows us that this filament adheres very well to the build plate and it doesn't warp at all. In the end, I had no issues printing with this filament. However, I was a bit disappointed by all of the stringing. The surface finish of this filament, however, is really great. So, is cheap 3D filament really bad? In my opinion, it isn't. As you could see, the Eligu and the Creality PLAs performed really well. There are some slight surface imperfections and they tend to contract a little more than more expensive filaments, but other than that, they printed really easily without any issues and the results were really, really great. I generally use cheaper filaments for 99% of all of my prints. I only use the expensive stuff or the more expensive stuff when I need a very, very nice surface finish. There are, however, some issues that you could run into when you use very cheap filament. For example, cheap filament can have color inconsistencies. The fact that it has higher tolerances could also lead to a clogged nozzle or very rough surface imperfections. Sometimes very cheap filament is also delivered dirty, so meaning there is dirt on the filament itself or there are some things that aren't supposed to be on the filament that can lead to a clogged nozzle. But you can somewhat avoid this by using a filament cleaner that's a little clip that you can clip on the filament and it'll basically clean the filament as the printer pulls it in. Cheap filament can also be brittle or it can be spun too tightly on the spool. Both of these things can lead to a failed print as the filament either breaks while it prints or it completely unravels and tangles around the printer as the printer pulls the filament in. I personally never had issues printing with cheap filament, um, except for one time when I bought some Amazon Basics PLA, which I can't recommend at all because it basically crossed off every single one of the issues I just mentioned. It kept on tangling around my 3D printer, it kept breaking and it kept clogging the nozzle. It was a horrible experience and I ended up throwing the spool away because I could not for the life of me print with it. So I hope this video was helpful to you and if I missed anything then let me know in the comments below.